Welcome to another episode of the Kind Adulting Podcast, where we talk about all things affecting kind adults. I'm Simone. I'm Elise. And I'm Jordan. How are you doing? Like <laughs> um, it's been a trying night yet again on the recording of Kind of Adulting Podcast. If you guys don't know, we are not professionals and we are trying our best and like we also have jobs and we are tired and Elise is driving cross country tomorrow due to the fact that her photo shoot is still happening on Sunday but winter weather wants to come for her yet again so we are here trying our best. I just feel like when you try to do better it makes things more complicated you know <laughs> yes like we used to just record on this little app on our phone and then we wanted to get microphones to like be real podcasters and it has been trying but how many episodes have we done four so far this season or something mm-hmm. very trying not gonna lie to you it has been quite trying we <laughs> i keep on saying each week okay next week we're gonna have it down pat like next week we're gonna be good but we are trying not lie to the very people. optimistic i think i think <laughs> i think i give myself like you know two more weeks i think we're gonna have it together i feel like our audio does sound better i will say that like yeah. much better um than recording on a phone but uh, we we're, not, we're not in a studio we also never gonna I'm be in literally studio. sitting on my bedroom floor we're never gonna be in a studio because we don't live in the same city so like eventually we're gonna figure this all out um because honey honey we are tired we are tired but we're not gonna down you guys but we are here we've got i feel like (laughs) i feel like this episode will be funny um a little shady (laughs) funny not well not the whole episode but there are some pieces that will pop yeah yeah the whole episode you know we talk about something so you'll see so anyway um so each week <laughs> thank you for that <laughs> each week you, we you give you guys intro. um a not so peer-reviewed adulting fact or a tweet from beyonce's internet and again don't come for us if the fact is wrong but however we got this fact for this week it says an allison partner study revealed gen z consumers view cars more like more like appliances and nearly 56 percent agree a car represents essentially no more than a means of transportation some 70 percent of gen z consumers do not have their driver's license and 30 percent of this group have no intention or desire to get one in fact gen z survey respondents actually ranked alternative reality vr and smart homes higher in interest than automobiles um i can say i have a license and I need a car because the reason why I'm so tired is because I've been on this train, I mean, on these trains for two hours going and two hours coming back for work because it's a pandemic and I can't get a job otherwise. And I waited 40 minutes for a bus that never came. So if I had a car, I could have just been home and like you missed the One key hour. detail of that story because she FaceTimed me, what, like two hours ago? She said she was on the bus and this man got off the got kicked off the bus. So you were waiting for the bus, right? Got kicked I was off waiting, the bus. yeah. And this man had no mask on. It was all up in Jordan's ear. And she called me as protection, but I don't know what I was going to do because I'm still in Georgia. <laughs> but I was like, Jordan, let me stand on the have phone my with location. you. I was like, let me stand on the phone with you. She was like, no, nah, I'm good. I said, okay, because you could fight him off of what? With no, your nice he, wig, he like was what just you about to do? Yelling because he was mad about being kicked off the bus, and then he started peeing. It was just like a lot going on. I was like, <laughs> Lord Jesus, I need to get from out of here. I need to go home. I need to go home. Well, I do feel like this study shows that our poppy, our generation is a little brighter than our parents. I don't want to say brighter, but like, uh, you know, we all grew up around people who or new people who put all their money into cars, like not saying our parents did, but I'm sure we've experienced people like that. And as we all know, cars are a depreciating asset. And so the fact that our pop, our generation is like saying it's not a good investment, I'd rather invest in like a smart home. Don't know if a smart home's very necessary either, but 
at least we're not out here just buying these expensive cars just to have them. And like, I can personally say, I do not, well, I have a car at home, but it's not really my car. I don't need a car in New York. And when I do move to a city where I need a car, don't quote me on this because I might buy a nice car when I move, but I don't think I would like die to have one. I would just probably but take they, my- the, the thing was talking about people with licenses. And if I recall from my first memory- of all, First of I, all, from my, from my memory, I was the first one to have a driver's license out in both of you okay. guys. Okay. What and, that got to do with the point I was and making? Y'all, <laughs> and y'all, for right some over. reason, didn't want to have a license. I had to drive myself. I had to drive myself towns, cities, cross borders, pick Simone up, and then take her to high school games because she didn't have a license. Thank you, Jordan. Jordan I, no it was only for one semester. That's what I was just about to say. I could count on by whole. No, you didn't get a license for senior year. I could count no, on I got it junior year. Beyond, That's second, I mean, besides so. that, I could count on two fingers how many times Elise has driven me to a football game because I had someone who lived down the street for me. I used to ride with Don't my lie. Friends. I would come to your house and we would get ready together and I would drive you at least seven times. At least. We used to, uh, first of all. Not counting them. Not seven times. But, oh, what's funny is you just said you came to my house. You know whose house we did go to? Mahogany's. Uh-uh. So that we talked about in the high school episode. That oh, yeah. I didn't like her. I remember I was mad. You we went to her house to get ready for the football game. And I guess who drove you there? At least. But you had to be her friend to be excited. To- <laughs> no, I didn't want to go. She talked. She picked you, Simone, because she knew. She knew that that I didn't like her because I asked if she was playing dumb or not. But because anyway. I I don't know if it was an act. I don't know if it was an act or she was for real, for real. Back to the podcast back to this, and back not to the last like I was saying. Episode. <laughs> Wait, but also. I don't remember what? what my point was because Elise stopped by. Dinner. Oh, what were you saying, Jordan? Go ahead. Okay, but I feel like who is Gen Z? Because did they see Smart Home, the movie Smart Home? Yo, I think or it's Smart really, House. Yeah, because we were or in whatever between Gen Z. Talking about the little boy. Yes. Smart guy. <laughs> app- no, no Smart but, Home, Simone. It's the the, the movie. Oh. The, it was a Smart Home, and then like it started malfunctioning, so it started like messing things up. Like it was filling the whole like house with apples and oranges and. I forgot the whole. Per- it's probably movie. on. Uh, it's probably on Disney Plus. You know they have all the old movies. That movie was so scary to me. I know exactly what you're talking about. It wasn't like a robot wife there too. Like a robot mom wife came. Like I, I thought it was. I, oh, because she was like a, a like a hologram yeah. or something. Yeah, bro. But I think because we are. But it was between- like Alexa 2.0. But do yeah, you guys scary. have interest in like virtual reality stuff and like smart homes? Because I don't think I really do. No, but mm-hmm. I also think they're good in the south, and we like. Let's be real. We all like big things and nice things. And I think that's just from just us living in a place that had a lot of space. So I'm like, you know, I should be more eco-friendly. But that ain't got nothing to do with, well, yeah, I guess a smart home. But like, I'm thinking <laughs> smart home in the sense of like, you're back and cleaner working on its own. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. I have a Roomba. You know, I'm big time. So I got a Roomba. Friendly. But I, don't <clears throat> quote me, because I will say I don't think of, like, a car as anything more than something to get me around right now. But if I move to, like, Houston or some or Atlanta, I'm not going to lie. Eventually, I'm going to give myself the car I want. So, anyway, we can move on. I don't know if we really talked about that in, in full depth, because we, we're a little, we're going to get it together, guys. So, you guys just stay tuned for our discussion. In the next segment, we'll have our discussion where we try and offer our thoughts on a topic that relates to us being in our early 20s. What's the time there? Uh, I'm gonna merge that track. We are at 9.25. Jordan, can you write down what time I'd start right now? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, wait. <sighs> Our times are going to be different. Aren't they? Our times are going to be different, though. So, like, you said, line this is fine. Just the range. Just okay. okay. So, before I start this, I just want y'all to know that we did intend to throw a little bit of shade, but Elise wrote this talk track. So, I don't want y'all coming for me. Talk about <laughs> Simone. Talk about this man. Okay. Simone, why did you call me out? You were the talk track I person of our team. Because, be, look, it's very good. It's very creative, but I don't want y'all to be like, Who's Simone? You being real? I need to share the blame. Simone, okay. So anyway, I, the people on Clubhouse said the podcast needs to have roles. Your role is to be the shady it is one. My role. Okay, okay, y'all, but y'all just okay. So 
don't get them don't get those church girls on me don't get them mm -mm. that's what i'm saying i don't want them because i'm little (laughs) i'm little they don't want me just last week was she talking about how she was choosing violence jordan okay anyway two weeks ago come oh my god sorry play with it so i'm bad girls club play with it (laughs) play with it okay go on so on (laughs) So I'm sure everyone has seen on social media this week, people took to a little bit of a dragging about the usually viral pastor, Michael Todd, for a couple of things that he has done, said, did, visually represented. And so two big things were, you know, first he was recorded splashing around in a kiddie pool while trying to get his sermon across, um, necessary I don't know, especially y'all, because the the message was really about impressing versus being impactful, but we'll get there. So then the kiddie pool turned to him wadding in knee deep water. Waiting, waiting, child, waiting in the water. water. You don't know the slave in him? First of all, anyway. What church did you go to? What AME church did you go to? Does that mean that I've seen the spelling or like, anyway. Most people on the internet were concerned that this man was mixing water with electronics and people got on Twitter and started bashing millennial pastors as extra and too into theatrics. Other Twitter users (laughs) and into theatrics. Uh, (laughs) I can try. I don't know. Okay. Come on. Get hyped. What's the time? What's the time, Jordan? 12 something. I'm not 12. tired. I'm just a little blurred in my brain right now. Okay. Get hype, Simone. Get hype. So get as hype, Simone, get hype. Okay. Sorry. So I'm sure most of you guys have seen on social media this week people taking a dragging to the viral pastor, Michael Todd, for a couple of things, really. And two of the bigger things were first him, you know, splashing around in a kiddie pool while trying to get his sermon across, especially because the sermon was uh, focused on being impactful versus impressive. So yeah. Um, Then the kiddie pool turned into him wading in deep, deep water. And most people on the internet were concerned that this man was mixing water with electronics, you know, hazard. And people got on Twitter and started bashing millennial pastors as extra and too into theatrics. Other Twitter users defended Pastor Todd and said his very produced sermons actually keep their attention and help them understand the world better. By all rights, Todd has become a celebrity himself. Like the man is constantly going viral on Twitter or Instagram and his sermons are definitely targeted to reach people in their 20s. From the same kiddie pool sermon, he got slack as he should for basically calling out people for doing silhouette challenges like our childhood pastors probably weren't talking about those um, while wearing off-white sneakers. But we aren't here to debate Pastor Todd's sermon or anything like that because of because um, we probably listened to him before and a lot of you probably listened to him as well. But the whole conversation and popularity of his sermon and a lot of his freaking sermons got us thinking about how we approach religion and spirituality in our 20s and how we have changed or stayed the same since leaving our parents house so first i was wondering what you guys is you know spiritual or religious life is now that you're in your adult life and what things have you guys kept from college and you know what have you stopped doing how would you describe your religion right now um i will say so i'm a christian um go to church uh yeah I feel like I mean I guess I say like I think taking it back to like how I was raised so I was raised like went to AME church around the corner for a while my different church and then my parents say I you know they can debate this later on but I swear that our pastors told everyone that we were, we were all going to go to hell so then my parents left and then we took us to this mega church that I swore oh I swore this church was a scam from the second I went there. I swear it was people were always moving around. I went to church for like seven years. What do you mean moving around? Like the the employees, like the pastors would always like the head pastor was the same, but like all the people underneath him would change like every six months. It was really strange. It was a big church though. It was like in your Cumberland mom. If you probably are from Atlanta, you probably know what I'm talking about. And it was definitely like casual. People wore jeans. Um 
it was like it was actually a lot of production you know it was like very much like a business they would give you outlines you walk in the door you would fill out the outlines but I went to church for seven years my parents say their excuses excuse was that um they wanted to go to a church that had a better children's program for my brother and I we started going there um for about seven or eight years and I met nobody there like I don't even know it's a community like uh, we went there each Sunday I was I, I had to go it was not a choice in my family to go to church you went to church because you live in the house and that was that I grew up in a black southern family so I feel like it's kind of a thing like people just go to church like it wasn't really like a I don't know like uh, yeah it was kind of a thing that was just like you did it was like a chore per se like you went to church it wasn't a choice you didn't you didn't say like oh I'm not I don't feel like going to church today um well before college um I was raised Christian um I was I wouldn't say we were always going to church I feel like we definitely went to church a lot more when my grandmother was alive um after that it kind of fell off um but my parents still try to keep me involved with it um but we lived far away from my church like we went to church in Riverdale um so it was, it was just a lot but in college I did not go to chapel at all and you know but Howard Chapel was more like a black history um sermon it was more <laughs> um afrocentric than like well okay I would I haven't gone but this is what I've heard so don't uh, how you how you not gone how you, this? you ain't even been <laughs> anyways uh now that I live by myself I have not gone to church um but I wouldn't say I don't believe in God because I do believe in God but I've just been more um open to different ways of worshiping Mm -hmm. um I've been more interested or not more interested but I've been um well yeah more interested in like Hulu and African traditional religions ATRs um because I feel like it's it was something lost when um our ancestors were forced to be here um and you know people are the slaves we all know were forced to um drop their traditional re- uh, religions yeah. yeah and convert to con- uh, Christianity so um I think it's really interesting um I wouldn't say that I'm practicing but at the same time I do take stuff from like different things but I'm just really trying to see what feels right for me right now um but it's no shade to people I don't I don't shake people who go, who go to church um in the bible and all this stuff because a lot of the stuff that people um base like certain rituals around and stuff comes from the bible like the bible has a lot of spells too but it's just like a way a different lens of looking at religion <laughs> Yeah, no, I wasn't laughing at you. I was just laughing because I'm like, we we're about to get some Twitter uh, responses here because y'all know this is a constant like discussion on Twitter. Um, but I would say like personally, growing up, I was definitely always at church every Sunday. Um, do you have a choice, or was it like you have to go? No, I did not have a choice. Yeah. And as I got older, I still didn't really have a choice, and I always felt like even if I was home for college or something, it was expected that I go. Um, now, my family wasn't the type where we couldn't miss a Sunday. Like, we definitely did sometimes. And, you know, I started playing sports. So I had to miss a lot of Sundays. But um, I do feel like when I left home, I went to college and did not really go to church as much. I personally felt like I needed to develop my own relationship with church and with God. Um, and it needed to come without, like, the pressures of my parents wanting me to go. And so then when I went to New York, I actually did begin to go to church regularly by myself a lot of times. Like I would just go and it would be my intimate time. And I feel like my relationship with God definitely grew a lot. And my commitment to being present in church definitely changed because I think in college or, you know, college or just being home with my parents, I was just going with them. And it felt like I was fully like engrossed the way I should have been. And like now that I go on my own and I find my own personal time to go, it's like, you know, just my like one-on-one connect time. So that's definitely how my relationship has grown. But 
before we get to the real discussion questions, I did, I forgot to ask you, I did want to know what y'all thought about uh -huh. the video because I know Jordan watched today. I watched a few days ago. How are y'all feeling about this message and the kiddie pool possible monsoon that was occurring <laughs> in the church? Okay, so I, so I'm not going to be really transparent. I listen, listen to Michael Todd, like, and I worked in the office, like, I listen to Transformation Church podcast. Like, I have a church in DC that I go to, but I listen to, like, their podcast because I feel like it was, like, you know, a little bit, they'll be very, they'll be very energetic. They'd be, ooh, they'd be getting it over the microphone. But I watched a sermon, and all I could think about, so I'm just talking specifically about him being in the water. I'm not talking about the silhouette challenge, but it's a water thing. The whole time I was like, if he was a woman, he would have a yeast infection. He just sitting in stale water like that. Shut not up. Not with jeans on, at least. Not with jeans on. Shut you gotta up. sit he in the water there. You said Smart. that Smart. earlier Smart. and I was so confused. I was like, <laughs> no. The pants. whole time I was thinking about, I was like, I hate, okay, I, I just don't like sitting in wet clothes. Like, you know, you go, you go to the pool and they would put you, like, put you, like, when you were little, you put your clothes over and it would still be kind of wet and you'd be like, eh. That was all I thought about. I said, is no, he okay? I just okay? To keep going about my day. Isn't he, mm -hmm. it's not, it's, aren't the clothes clinging to him? It was just sitting in water. And then when the knee deep water came, the whole thing I could think about was, how they get that water in that church? Is it was there a hose? That's a lot of water. That was a lot of it water, was, and I think it kept running. It was, and who was it? Fresh how did water. They get rid of the water. Did they just come in with a vac and suck it all out? Like they, they do have water vacs. That is the thing. But, but the question: How much money did this cost? That's only thought about. I said, "Where did they get the water from?" That's a massive water bill. My water bill was twice, was two times as much as it was last month, and I wasn't even there. So, what was their water bill? <laughs> because. <laughs> And again, aren't you uncomfortable? Does he maybe maybe you have waterproof underwear on? Because I would have lost it. I couldn't have done it. I would have been like, I would have had it gone to like a full body dryer or something because it was really stressing me out. But to the actual words, I couldn't get I, the words. I couldn't. Yeah, get that's there what I was about to say. Because like, the water was stressing me out too much. I do think he sometimes. Was he wearing shoes in the deep water? Was he yeah. wearing socks? Yes, he was. He was oh, wearing like I sneakers. Think, he must he be. He probably disciple. had those he like water strong. shoes on that you wear in the pool, but. I do think like some things he says, like I definitely agree with, but then sometimes I'm just like, uh, I don't know. Like, and I definitely think you had a point when you're talking about how our, I mean, now my old pastor, he did mention Beyonce one time, but like Beyonce is Beyonce, right? Mm -hmm. Not in the way that pastor uh, Todd did, but I do feel like our pastors would not have mentioned something like the silhouette challenge. Cause it's like, <laughs> I saw somebody on Twitter who was like, well, how does he know about the silhouette challenge? Like, has he been watching? And it's like, but for real though, you know, like, well, I, I, think I respected his point, uh, telling men to be more impactful, right? Like, I really appreciated that because I feel like what we talk about a lot is like social media changing, you know, how we are with relationships and stuff like that. I really valued that, like do for your wife and don't do for the gram of your friends, but then he kind of lost me. And then, like you said, when the water started flowing in, I wasn't sure if he was going to be ripped, come a, from? ripped away by a, a, a <laughs> rip tide or, you know, whatever. Like, I didn't know if he was going to make it. He could have drowned. The water just kept coming. What if they That would have been a mess. Too much. It was too much. Were there lifeguards? And then when I realized he was chilling, <laughs> when I realized he was kneeling in that kneeling water. Kneeling in it. Yeah. He stood up. I said, oh, wow. Simone, well, Simone, I think about Michael Todd. It's so messed up. Simone, Simone messed me up. I remember one time someone DM me a picture of Michael Todd, right? And I said, yeah. He said, why he look like that? I said, Simone, what? I said, I, I said, whatever. I listened to his podcast. I thought she was talking about his sermon. I said, oh, what about the sermon? She said, he, he always talks about that type of stuff. She said, I mean, no, I mean, like, why he look like that? I said, Simone, <laughs> you have scarred it. Now I can't even watch the video. I can only watch the podcast. But I always hear Simone's background in my head. Why he look like that? I'm like, he want to be fashionable. He want to be with the. He want to be with the children, like the girls say. I've, I've never. Um, I've seen his like videos come across my like I stories, say, edgy stories, because yeah. people like repost them. But I've never like listened to one, so that was kind of. I did listen to one, but I mean, I don't. I don't expect. Um, I won't say I don't expect much, but I don't expect there to not be like misogyny and uh, um homophobia well, we'll talk about and, the misogyny because like, uh, i didn't talk about that so talk about the misogyny that about the silhouette challenge yeah because i mean it was very light right there but just in general you know with like 
Christian pastors, like they do put a, a big emphasis on like not wow. being yeah like being modest and not being a certain because you won't attract the godly man and all this other stuff but also who's impregnating those people yeah the other God- thing it's all y'all rooted on this in- tangent, so- i have my it, questions ready y'all go on it this is tangent. but you have to think well listen we got feedback saying we need to be longer so we try to give them Child. But this is a valid point though like before we move on i think we talked about this last week with like chloe and some of the comments she was getting as well right like modesty is rooted in like you know this patriarchal idea which is misogyny like and we're going to talk about this like Elise is you know planning to get into this a little more but when you grow older and Mm -hmm. you're in this generation for one right but as you get older as a woman you have to like be able to discern what is me being a godly woman and what is someone trying to have control over me come on pastor simone how i behave oh shut up come on but like because we're not like i don't think i was taught by my parents per se but you're taught like if you're not behaving this way if you're doing those things like you're not godly and that's not it's not how that works and women are not the only ones who should have this like weight to bear because men should be if we're going to teach women this men need to be taught the same thing right like it's not a one side one way yeah 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 Yeah, that's really true and I think about now honestly talking about us and I think church like we're kind of skipping around questions but I think my idea of church and like religion was really challenged in college right so like when I went to college I went to UNC Chapel Hill for those who don't know half my a lot of my friends that I met were not from the south right and I think going from the south like everybody goes to church like everyone does in Atlanta like you may, may not even be religious but it's kind of the thing that people do on Sundays people assume that you go to church right or you you go to you have you may not go to church that day but your family has a church that if, if it's Easter they're gonna be at and so when I went to college and my friends kind of weren't like that I remember Easter coming up and they were like okay and I'm like I'm so sad I'm missing Easter like I'm not going to be home and realizing that people had different relationships with you know church and Christianity than I had just due to just growing up in that aspect like I am having friends who weren't even Christian like who are maybe Hindu and they were like oh I'm going to church on Sunday because they broke it down because to us like we were younger to understand like I also need to go practice my religion on Sundays and I think that is something that even for us because when I moved when I kind of got out the little bubble of like suburban Atlanta like not everyone thinks in that manner I met my friend and she's like I don't believe in God and I was like my grandma would faint if she heard that you know like and I think that's something different about kind of how we see it and our grievances with it and my friends to be honest in college didn't really feel that kind of conflict per se because they didn't grow up in that environment and that's kind of where I met people who think that kind of had to question my own kind of you know prejudices not like unconscious like my friend said she was like was like an atheist I was like oh what you know like I didn't say but I say that loud but in my head I was like this is different right or when she was like I don't believe in God like I was like girl don't say that around me you know what I mean because it's different and different for me and I'm realizing that like you know that was a growing period to understand like not everyone goes in the bible belt and not everyone has to deal with these like perceptions of like pressure of a church per se and I feel like that's more like in college mm-hmm. so I guess my next question is for you guys in college, like, what did you guys kind of start rejecting or accepting about, you know, your upbringing of like religion? So it's, it was the first time that we were able to kind of make our own decisions about not going to church. So uh, you guys both said you guys already didn't go to church a lot um, in college. I started going a lot my senior year by myself, but I guess like you had so many similar stories about kind of maybe rejecting or changing some things about your religion once you kind of broke away and started college? Uh, yeah, um, I would say my freshman year, especially like, well, like freshman year, sophomore year, like I was going through a lot. Like I lost my scholarship. Like I was in a new city. I was constantly sick. Um, and I really had to come like get it what is it come to Jesus meeting like I had to have multiple of those because like I just kept hitting rock bottom and it was just like I I have no one else but like God at this point because like at this point I'm out like I feel like I'm about like dead like not dead like I'm gonna kill myself but in the sense of like everything was failing for me and I had to really like find strength to keep going 
um, and to keep like pursuing my dreams. Um, and it just, it really was different for me because I don't know, I just, I felt like I was away from doing what you're supposed to do, um, you know, and having somebody tell you, oh, you should do this, this, and this. So I really needed guidance. Like I didn't have a great guidance counselor in um, college, um, even with like the work, like just getting the right courses and stuff. So I really had to do everything by myself. And it was just like, Jordan, you need somebody else. Like you can't do all this on your own. And for me, that was God. So I definitely did get a closer relationship than I ever did. Just going to showing up to church, you know, um, but because my parents told me it's time to go. Yeah. D- my oh, freshman year. Okay. Your freshman year. So, yeah. yeah. That's interesting. I didn't know that, Jordan, at all. I have surprises. Oh, surprises. <laughs> but yeah, Simone, what about you? Do you feel like you got more spiritual in college or did you kind of take a break your couple years? You kind of broke away from being your parents' um, house? I probably wouldn't say I was... I wouldn't say I was more spiritual. I think in college I did have a lot of like moments where I like was calling on God like and and you know those good like cry sessions you know where you're just like you kind of breaking down like I did have a lot of those I would say more than what I did that first year being in New York so I would say in that sense yes um but I would like when it came to actually going to church now part of it was you know like I was never at school on the weekends. Like I was always traveling for volleyball. And I mean, that's no excuse. Like I could have watched online, but I will say it was just never a priority. And I hate to say that, but it just wasn't. No, it's real life though. It's real um, life. Yeah, it wasn't for me. And then when I got to college or when I went to my, when I moved to New York, um, I just started going by myself. And I realized that that's kind of what really um, strengthened that, that, um, Pre- like my presence in church more is like not because I I will say like in general going to clubs and all that I'm a person who cares about what people look like I like to say I don't but I always feel like people are watching me always like uh, you know my mannerisms and so I was I feel like I was always self-conscious in church like I was always self-conscious to like stand up and dance and that type of thing and so when I got there to New York and I would go by myself and I didn't really know anyone in the church I felt like you know, I was just kind of there, like I, no one knew me, and I just could have, I could fully be open, and I think that that's when I really started to appreciate, you know, being in the presence of the Lord um, more, especially more than when I was here with my parents. Yeah, I definitely feel like in college, like, I don't know, but like, I sometimes feel pressure, not from my parents, but from my family, not from my dad too, like, they would always be like, call me on Sunday in college, and be like, what you, you go doing? to church this morning right and I'm like oh no, you could go out but you can't go to church right I'm like no I'm sitting oh I'm eating no I'm watching Real Housewives right and it'll be like you're not going to church and my grandma would call me like you're not going to church and you know when you're like first of all there there were there were churches on campus there was a lot of church groups on campus there was even like shuttles to like black churches you know but I just felt like you yeah. know to be really real, my friend group wasn't going to church. And in college, your friend your friend group was a lot of what you do, right? And so my friend group wasn't going to church. They didn't really, we didn't really talk about Christianity like that. My one friend was Catholic. And so she went to church, but I wasn't Catholic, right? So I was like, I'm not going to go with her to Catholic service. And so I didn't feel like I had anyone to really go with the church per se, which sounds really bad, but it wasn't real. And then I feel like I didn't really fit in on those like, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Edit that out probably that time but I feel like people who were going to church like um a lot of the on-campus church groups were like very felt like very high school clubby like they all were te- it was like young life you know young life Mm-mm. it felt yeah. very like something's wrong way but it felt like very like campy like Christian campy mm-hmm. and very white and I feel like I wasn't gonna fit in there and also I didn't really want to go to church in a renovated auditorium like I don't know I, I felt like church for me was like I want to kind of feel at home I wanted to feel at the black church and so and there was I mean there was like I went to mass few school so there were sermons all the time you could go to different sermons for different things no matter what <coughs> sorry <laughs> I mean my throat but I just feel like I didn't really fit in but I did feel a lot of pressure from my family 
to be like, why are you not going to church? And again, kind of Simone said, like, I feel like it wasn't in my heart. So I didn't really feel get, like want to go at that time. I'm like, it's not in my heart. And you're right. What's my priority? I went out on Saturdays. I was tired on Sundays. Like my priority was not waking up. Yeah, but like. And trying to find the, a shuttle to go to church. And that's the thing. 20, if 21. If you're not in a mental space to be there, to me, there's no point in going. What are you getting out of it? You're not getting, you're not hearing the word. And so you have to be in a place where you want to go on your own. But I just wanted to say, um, also, I have grown to really enjoy the non-denominationals. Um, my church in New York, shout out to The Gathering, is non-denominational. And I feel like I was able to um, receive the message better. It's not like, I don't know, sometimes... So is uh, it when non-denominational, do you mean like it's more... Like it's not a Baptist church. It's anyone who really wants to go, right? But it is, is a it mostly young people? It's young and it's it's black and Latino, right? Okay. So um, I like that, right? I, I will say my, my dad was always opposed to going to a white church. I'm just gonna put that out there. He felt like, you know, that's not the time to be learned, you know, whatever, not to get comfortable. <laughs> but I enjoy that, right? Like, and I live in Harlem. It's easy for me to find a black church, but I value that. Like, I, and I think people don't always agree with that idea, but I feel like it's a safe space, right? And so my church that I currently go to, it is non-denominational and I enjoy it. I get my message. It's not, you know, you grow up in those older churches and the older pastors. Sometimes it's hard to, to uh, understand what they talk about, right? Uh, because mm -hmm. they're, a lot of times they're talking over your head. And so that's what I do appreciate. I've been to a few different ones, non-denominational churches. And I do feel like sometimes it's um, an easier message to receive because it's like a younger person who's talking to you, right? Well, then level. it's kind of like but then it's kind of different to michael todd right like michael todd may be extra but people who are in their 20s relate to him more and for me like the opposite of you i really did not want to go to a non-denominational church like i my church in dc is baptist i wanted to be in a black historical church i did not want to be in a church with a lot of 20 year olds wearing jeans like i was very adamant like that's not what i wanted because i had that for like eight years and I feel like I didn't really gain a community and at least if I go to church now I feel like I feel like I see like my pretend aunts like I see like I see the tradition mm -hmm. I see the ushers and like I I want I make me feel more in touch I guess with like my history my ancestry right because I kind of went to the mega church thing and it wasn't for me and I really kind of pushed back on that as much as I could once I had kind of the autonomy to do so but Again, I, yeah, I think it is about like kind of what like you said, Simone, some people do in their 20s relate back to more younger pastors or younger people giving advice. I'm not even Christianity, it's younger people, young, younger spiritual advisors. Yeah, and I feel like also it's, <coughs> it's a community too. Like, you know, there's so many young people and like we do things together. I need to be more involved. So I ain't gonna say I'd be doing stuff. But there's so many like options. Like if you're a new person, you know, new to the city, new to the church, like, and I think that that's what's also cool. Um, but just a little tidbit, my childhood pastor did like pass away uh, while I was in college. So he was my pastor from like the age of five till college, right? And so I do think that I struggled with a little bit of disconnect for a while because I just felt like my church home was not my church home anymore. Like our new pastor, it wasn't my pastor and mm -hmm. maybe I did a complete shift because of that too um but I did struggle for a while to like really feel anything I guess I probably should have said that at the beginning but it did like affect me for a while yeah I was thinking and like I don't want people to think that I had like some like bad relationship with like Christianity or anything but like I used to go like to Awana and stuff and like really yes. be like involved um and my pastor he's like great like I love him like he knows my name like it's a big church and he's just like oh hey Jordan you're back I'm, yeah I am but um and he does he's not homophobic he's not misogynist he's always just like you know he's always incorporating that in his like uh sermons and stuff but for me it still didn't feel not right but I just didn't feel called to go you know I don't feel called to do it um like things that I do now um I have an ancestral altar um, tell us so more I about that Jordan <laughs> no I think it's a good point though because like no it is a good point but it's just <laughs> 
Jordan just makes me laugh and like I, I think I'm just talking because about her. there's like, other guess, things there are and I'm Christianity not, right and I'm not laughing I, I don't want you mm-hmm. to think that I'm laughing at it and no means like I, I definitely respect all religions I, you just make me laugh and like your water cups and stuff like <laughs> I don't know it's just but it's it's you have to think like that's probably just a little bit of immaturity on my part because I'm like that's it's funny but like I understand that it holds value. but yeah it's different for us to, because yeah so I don't want you to think that I'm laughing at you but no no just, I didn't think that but yeah, yeah I'm thank you for making that clear um so yeah I have an altar set up for my ancestors um basically uh you can start it yourself. It's with like a cup of water, a white candle is really all you need. Um, but you can add more things to it, like um, a knife or a sword for protection, um, incense um, for, well, you can do like the basic elements. So water for water, of course, um, a candle for like heat, um, the incense is for air and like a plant for like earth, right? So um, I have all those things and um, I just have different um, little memories that remind me of my ancestors that have passed away. So like I have my grandmother's ring um, and like on it and stuff. And like, I have different other things too, but basically I really, I pray. Like it's no different from praying as a Christian. But it's just, you have a face, you know, like, you know, somebody Mm. from like your past, like that you knew when you were alive and also like your ancestors from way before too. Um, And I, you can probably gonna laugh at me again, but I, it's, I feel it. Like I, I hear something back, you know, like I, I pick up messages. I don't think that's something that's funny because it's the same thing as people seeing family members who have passed or. Uh, Mm -hmm. you know having their spirits come like that's you know that's what you're experiencing so like I I say that because you know this is a constant discussion like on Twitter I don't know if you ever see those or they talk about you shouldn't be embracing your ancestors but like oh really do you think yeah it's been a I've seen yeah a lot of people don't think they don't they don't think it's Christian at all but I do think um like you're saying we and that's why my dad always was like you have to be in a black church Right, because I do think in some ways some of our beliefs or our rituals and practices were, you know, either removed or watered down, right, to fit into this like mold of Christianity, um, which was not rooted to respect like what we believed in, right? Like it's just mm-hmm. erase your stuff and you you convert. But it's the same thing as like your parents telling you that your grandmother's watching down on you, and so yeah, there's has to be like a level of like these are my beliefs, but like. I cannot just outrule that, right? Because personally, I know my grandmother's watching down on me and my grandfather and like, I've lost a, uh, probably a lot of family members, I would say, but like, they're all watching down on me and protecting me. And I believe that firmly, you know? And even though some people might not believe that that's very Christian, that is my own, you know, discernment there. And, and that's what I was kind of getting into earlier. It's like, we just have to like, you know, rule some things is like, maybe this is like more of a social uh, I don't want to say social construct but like our own interpretation of something that mm-hmm. of how things are supposed to go yeah and then Jordan I wanted um, to ask but, you oh go on oh I was about to say because like I know a lot of people struggle with saying like I don't know when God is talking to me right mm. like I yeah, can't I hear do. God I don't know what he's me supposed too. to be telling me to do like that was me um now I literally set up situations where I'm just like this actually happened to me too I was like I don't know what I need to do for this certain situation like um if it's supposed to be this if I'm supposed to do this um show me like the word dragon fruit somewhere you know some word that I wasn't gonna like see through (laughs) and then I was like if it's Mm -hmm. another one I did three different options it was another one it was gonna be passion fruit and then if this is another one are they all fruits are they all (laughs) fruits But I wrote it in my prayer journal, right? So, and then I started a prayer journal. I never started a prayer journal, but yeah. I've written down my stuff and I realized it is coming to life. So I need to like recognize yeah. it, but I wrote it down and I promise you, I promise you 20 yeah. minutes later, I picked up an old receipt from like two weeks ago 
Uh-huh. And it had a dragon fruit refresher from Dunkin' Donuts. I, I said, never. I you bought a dragon fruit. I said, Jordan, what in the world? You I've get that never from? gotten that before. But that day, I was just like, I'm gonna try something different. And I completely forgot about it. But I was just cleaning up my room. I picked up the receipt. I was like, what is this? And it had dragon fruit on it. So I was like, okay, well, give me another one just in case, you know. <laughs> and then I walked in a random Target. And you know how they have the different, like, drinks on display mm-hmm. one of them was the dragon fruit one and the other one was like a kiwi so it didn't have no passion fruit and they always had passion fruit or guava so I was like okay I'm gonna keep doing I'm gonna do because that was what I was doing anyways but I was just like is this the right path for me and I got my confirmation so I do think Joe, when I asked you though was like do your parents like who taught you about like doing ancestor altars and like do your parents do ancestor altars like who like who like who where'd you get that from like where did you start doing that thing because I know like you, you do other stuff too like who told you to do the moon water like where did you get that from and like when did you start that was that in college was that like after college like when um yeah I think it slowly progressed from being into like astrology to like learning different things that were so-called like not Christian or not based yeah. in God you know um so I really I had to figure that out for myself um especially learning so much about like Christianity and like the history of it you know not necessarily what well some parts of what they teach but like the history of it too um as black people like it was really shady to me and I'm just like I don't understand how this like the hard questions like I don't understand how this is able to be a thing if God loves me, you know, like, I don't understand how, like, it's supposed to be 400 years of slavery, and then we still haven't gotten really over it, you know, um, but it was just, like, I had to go out and seek it for myself, but that brought me closer to God, honestly, me going outside of religion, well, outside of Christianity, and saying, like, oh, I don't know about God, and all this other stuff brought me so much closer, um, and with this, I still believe in God, you know, um but no nobody from my family taught me about anything like this I learned it from (laughs) Twitter but I just follow different though I follow different priests priestesses priestess how do you say the female priestesses priestesses priestesses. please forgive me but like I follow a different like a lot of different people who practice different religions Mm -hmm. um and you know I just kind of do what I feel called to do but with that it's still a religion so it's not like you can just like halfway like half ass it basically so what I'm doing right now is really trying to figure out what religion I'm called to um but -hmm. like hoodoo in itself is just the um African American um like African traditional religion um religion that's the one that um our ancestors brought over with them um, which voodoo is what people are more familiar with but that's more like creole and louisiana and stuff like that hoodoo is just like basic not basic but more widespread mm-hmm. but yeah i learned all this online and like you would think like oh like people are just telling you lies and stuff like there's whole traditions rituals and all this and other you stuff know your history you know yeah and so like people you know how they have like sermons online you can read about the bible online and stuff I follow people's uh, Patreons and I read about the things that they've been taught and stuff. And a lot of it's like oral history, but you know, for black people, we didn't, I mean, we did write stuff down, but oral. most of our history is oral. We, we didn't even know how to really write for majority of us for, you know, 400 years. We literally were not, not 400 years, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We literally, and, and even to this day, there are so many black people who still are not capable of reading and they writing are. to a certain level right so yeah you know there are so many things that have been erased and I think it's important for you know people like you Jordan to go back and like dig some of these things up right and and share these things because these are this is our history this mm-hmm. is like you know traditions of the past and in present too but like it's important for us not to just like erase those things and just rule them out as not being christian or godly yeah and then oh go ahead i was just thinking like what are some other things right that like maybe you do now in how you practice your spirituality right Uh that your family i think my family being from like you know alabama would not approve of like for me one thing was a big thing was therapy when i started going to therapy my grandma was like is your therapy is your therapist christian 
I was like, you know, I didn't really ask her that when I was doing, really? when I was interviewing her and she was like, you don't need to go to a non, like a Christian, like a non-Christian therapist. Like, you don't know what she tells you. And even still, like my, my new therapist now, like she's like, you all talk about God. And I'm like, we don't. And my therapist doesn't, doesn't go, is, I don't, she does not, does not go to church. Right. And it doesn't really affect how I think she's able to, you know, be a therapist to me. But like, I remember when I was having really bad anxiety, you're going to keep on telling me just to pray. Oh yes. I was actually going to add that. To be very me. honest. I was just like, Hey, listen, that's not really helping me right now. And she would get frustrated and I understand. Cause you know, from the South, you know, Alabama, like, I would meditate a lot. Like that's what I got really good, really, really good. I feel like people don't know this at hypnotizing myself. And that's something that I kind of had got really into and really well my senior year because I was having horrible anxiety attacks, right? And I had to find a way to like meditate to kind of take myself out of it for a second, take my body away from it. But just like Jordan, like it's like in Simone, like what are the other things that you may do now that your family may be like, mm that's not what we do yeah I was gonna add to that yeah you said it but I definitely think like there have been on there have honestly been moments where I have called um my parents and like been in a really bad like bout and my dad would say you know have you been praying and it at first like when I first started dealing with that in college I would be really like offended because I'd be like same bro I mean, I mean this is something's going on and I called you I did pray but like I'm still sitting here crying what am I supposed to do I I don't know you know and my mom and I have had to kind of like you know re uh what is the word bring that in a little bit in, in the sense of like explaining you know uh depression is depression and you can pray about it but it doesn't just wipe away the depression like Sometimes you do have to get to the root of the problem. Sometimes you do have to go to therapy. And like you're saying, that's why half our families are jacked the hell up right now. Like they got issues. People, yeah. you know, especially black people. But I think that that's rooted in, in, in religion, honestly, is why they don't go to therapy and stuff. But we have to like, that's one, that's an example of something we've had to decipher as a younger population. Like our parents, you know, people always say they're like, it's really interesting when you realize like your parents could have used some type of therapy, but like it's real. And we've had to realize, okay, I can still be a good Christian and go to therapy. I can still pray and get treatment for my depression. You know what I'm saying? And so yeah. that's like the clearest example I have because I don't think my parents were too um, down my throat about certain things, like when it came to religion, but that that's something that's always stuck with me. Um, For me... Well, I haven't told them that I have an alter. <laughs> I was about to say, how would you bring that up to them, I wonder? Um, but, you know, I do like tarot, like I'm getting into tarot and stuff like that and my crystals and like they ask about it. And like I did one of my like full moon rituals and my mom was like, okay. And then I had to go <laughs> burn it outside. And so she was waiting outside for me to burn it because she was like, it's dark out there wait for you and then like one time I told her I was uh fasting spiritually and she was like okay you know I think I think she's just glad <laughs> that, that I think that's more normal though versus but that. not for us though we don't fast. No, I'm saying, but for your family yeah, yeah I think you don't fast and stuff like that family. I was just saying like mm -hmm. I, you know, and like in the general sense yeah. yeah but I think she was just excited that I'm leaning on god or i'm leaning i don't in know if she thinks way, i'm right? leaning god but yeah she she thinks that i'm leaning on something that it's it's helpful it's helpful to me um therapy was never an issue like my parents or well, my mother actually was like trying to get me to go into therapy and what i didn't realize when i was younger is that you do have to try out therapists like you have to have test mm -hmm. runs you can't just be like all right you yeah. need to fix my problems so i didn't do that and i didn't like my therapist because reasons but yeah and I was like I had a black woman and she, I didn't like her like that and I just stopped going so but I want to do therapy again I just I, I guess we I don't have a whole it. episode on that but Bro, I can't <laughs> but uh, yeah I do just feel like you know like, as we go to our last question like I don't feel bad about not being more spiritual or more religious in college that's just not where I was right this is not where I was and to be very frank like it's because like something happened and I had to kind of come to that because I had nothing else to lean on and still I will say I still struggle with like 
finding people to share it with per se like I go to church by myself a lot of times like I had a friend that would come with me um, but she just moved so when the world does open up again like maybe go with her but I I would say like now I, I kind of go in bouts in and out per se like I think sometimes I have to be called to it and I want to be better I want to say I'm going to be better um because I found myself kind of being how I was when I was younger like in college being like eh like maybe sometimes like kind of like picking and choosing and I think that's I think the guilt sometimes may come later I think the guilt is just from like family of like being young and being like okay you're an adult now like I, I, my excuse in college was that I was studying what am I doing now on Sundays I'm watching Real Housewives so yeah yeah but also I meant to say this earlier I do think it's for me uh I was going very strong for a long time and then when COVID hit I was still watching every Sunday and then it slowly just tapered off and so I think that that's also had effect Same. but uh to finish it off I do think this this definitely could use a part two uh there are a lot of questions we did not really get into because it kind of just flowed naturally but I do think that this is the type of topic that you want that to happen for right and um well, I got one more question I gotta, I gotta get some I gotta went a little bit lighthearted now we got a little okay. bit lighthearted. what was it girl but well it was two things but like one what is some crazy religious stuff that y'all seen on social media like Jordan already said that she follows pre, 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 priestesses priestesses Priest. but like do y'all follow any um social media passages that y'all be getting things from and retweeting it Simone do you retweet things from I mean do you put stuff on your your story that you share that Bible is on it that may be incorrect I was that she said it may be what you say bridges on it that may be incorrect some bible verses that you may be putting on your story no I don't put bible sometimes it's be spelled wrong I have never first of all I ain't never put no bible uh verse on my story you looking at the right Simone because I actually oh, you don't, don't do, do that I don't even follow mm -mm, I don't see her doing I, I don't either. and I've only followed really one uh she calls herself a evangelist um and i don't really like a lot of the things she says but i just think it's a jesus <laughs> sprinkle is that girl with no. the jesus app no but i just but think why do you follow her i think her family's really cute like i like watching Child. no is but it I, love yes so i say Child. that to, so i say that to say i don't share nothing like that on my story because it surely ain't her that i'm sharing her stuff because the stuff she'd be saying i actually be sending to other people like this is so foolishness but i just think her family's <laughs> cute I was about to say though like people definitely do like spiritual things and they don't even know it like I know some black people they don't um they burn their hair like the hair that sheds from their um head they burn it I'm a sorry. lot of people burn their nail clippings too all that's all that's rooted in hoodoo and ATRs and then also what do people do oh the don't put your purse on the floor yeah. Or you won't get no money. Yeah, that's very that's yeah. a very southern thing. Child. All the superstitious things yeah, it's all superstitious. turned out yeah, to be exactly. rooted in like, you know, religion. So Did also, you no question at least trying to be shady, but you was wrong. What I wasn't trying I wasn't trying to so I, do you Jordan <laughs> back me. And Jordan no, had to say, no. yeah, Simone don't do no. that. Where'd she even get that from? Simone, list the Bible. I mean list the Bible. And she said that list, it'd be list the books wrong. of the Bible. List the book of the Bible. I have them up right now. List them. Go ahead. But name why? five. But why? People Matthew, want to know. Mark, Luke, John. You said that I post the Jordan, the Jordan, verses. Jordan. We Maybe you post you. the verses. So how about you do? I it? don't post no verses. So then I guess that should have never been said. So move it on. What was the rest of your question? She First and them. second king. Jordan. Comedians. We she, she, um, she, she didn't even know. Um <laughs> she didn't know. I mean um, what is the funniest okay I'm in our light note what are some funny stories of us growing up in the church and seeing things or things that were funny I honestly did not go to a, a crazy black church so I really don't have no stories like that at least I think you should share my okay. church is very calm and, and um yeah yeah a bunch of old people <laughs> but nothing as a child like I used to hate wearing those white socks I mean every was Sunday school would oh come, yeah. and I like they would come collect the little kids to go to Sunday school I would cry and hunt high under the pew oh yeah I did I, I, did used I to stayed argue. in regular church I didn't go to I hate I don't want those kids I don't want them mm, I don't want those kids I did used to fight with my mom about Easter dresses after a certain age because I felt like it should be cuter and not a fluff dress <laughs> and we did have an argument because she was like you're simply not old enough like you don't get to wear those multicolored dresses like them older girls I need you in your white curly socks and the black shoes you know I did experience that <laughs> I will say as we end because we're running late but 
I remember going to my mega church in Atlanta. They rent, they they remix some Trey song song. Oh, they remix "Only Girl in the World" Rihanna to "Only Jesus in the World," only only going God in the world. But it was the same beat and same song, and they went viral on Twitter. And I was like, "Lord, <laughs> I'm gonna girl, look that up." <laughs> I don't know Lord. where you used to end up, girl, but it's not like Jordan and I were I mean, in normal church. I mean, does does the gathering in New York not do hip hop songs? No, we actually don't. We just y'all maybe- sway, y'all sway together and hold hands. They do not sway. They Y'all just sway. have their Jordan own music. Sway. But I will say, yeah, we'll get into, we'll have another episode. But um, mm-hmm. just to finish our discussion off, I think it's important as we get older to uh, grow our own relationship with the Lord and with church, if that's what you want to do. Um, not, you know, by the pressures of social media or your family. It needs to be your own relationship. And it's important to like respect other religions and practices and uh, recognize that you can showcase your love and your faith, uh, you know, maybe not conventionally, like not by, you know, other people's standards and expectations. Because I do, like my mom always used to tell me, like, sometimes when you go to church, I ain't got to go to church. I got my relationship with the Lord. And that's really what it's about. If that's what you choose to do, because again, you know, we have other religions, we have, you know, people who don't believe in God at all. And that it, it is what it is. Like, it's not, you know, something that you have to do or you should do just because everyone's telling you to, like, just make it your own. So that's that on that. And then we do have a listener letter that we are still going to do because we try to give y'all the fun stuff. So you guys stay tuned. This week's listener letter is from Shady Boots. Um, <laughs> giving a shout out to Elise tonight. Um, mm-hmm. But It says, hey ladies, I was invited on a birthday trip with a group of friends next month and I'm conflicted on whether or not to go. My best friend invited me and although I'm close to her, I don't really know the other girls on the trip. I love her dearly and want to celebrate her day with her, but COVID. I have no idea how cautious these girls are being in their everyday lives or if they are out clubbing every weekend and refusing to wear masks. The number of cases are high and the death rate is two. I'm trying to stay home and take the safe route But here's the catch. I already told her yes when she originally asked me. This was before cases skyrocketed and I already bought my flight. I wanted to celebrate her day, get dressed and be fine, but I also want to protect myself. The closer the date gets, the more uncomfortable I am with going. Would I be wrong for canceling on such short notice? I'll take a flight credit versus being exposed. And don't forget to submit your listener letters before we answer Miss Shady Boots. So what do you guys think? Submit on where? Oh, at tinyurl.com. Or slash slash ka letters. <laughs> right? Slash ka letters. Yes. A lot. <laughs> Good job, Jordan. Let's Good job, answer Jordan. this question. Um, uh, I do not think that you should. If you feel in your mind that it's going to give you a level of anxiety, don't go because I do that a lot, and then I don't feel I don't have a good time right? Not, not COVID related, but sometimes I'll have anxiety about things. And I'm like, well, I need to go support my friend and be there. And sometimes you going, you just, you're going to have a bad attitude, right? And, or just be not on edge. So um, I think, I think, I think the best way, honestly, to not have your friend like be upset or anything, just be real and just say, hey, listen, COVID kind of scares me. I don't know where I'm going. And that's why I don't want to go. Now, how you make people mad if you just saying, hey girl, I, I just don't feel up to it anymore. And you just disappear and say nothing. Like you need to have an excuse and you have a perfect excuse, which is COVID. But say something, cause I'm not a friend. If you say nothing and just say, oh, you know, I don't feel like coming no more. I'm gonna be like, girl, what? Just invite it ever again. So just explain. And I feel like it should be fine. Yeah, I think COVID gives everyone the perfect excuse. Perfect really. excuse. But um, I think with the current situation even more, if you're going to be on the trip stressed the whole time, somebody accidentally coughs on you, breath around you, uh, touch your laptop, I don't know, there is no reason to go because that's a whole trip where you're just going to be paranoid. You're not going to be comfortable. You're going to be anxious the whole time. And, you know, I wouldn't want to be feeling that way, especially like out somewhere on a girl's trip. Like that just doesn't sound fun to me. And like you said, you don't know you know, even with, even with going with a small group of people that you feel like are taking the proper risk, you simply do not know. And so if you can't even feel comfortable in saying, oh, I think they're doing the right thing, then I surely would not even attempt to take the risk. Yeah, I agree. 
Um, but you said like it's getting closer and closer. Like I know you said that you're okay with like losing your deposit, but if they were kind of dependent on your like True. hotel deposit too, then I would say you should at least give Contribute. up a little funds, a little yeah. song song, be like, I'm sorry, it's too late. I mean, like it's late in the game, I know, but I would definitely say no to not going. Um, yeah. but I would say at least consider to give them something. Yeah, I think um, they yeah. may like decline, but you should at least, I feel like, offer it. Um, because I know that's the thing for well, I don't know if they're black, but they're probably black. But you know, black people, we be making a whole little groups and stuff, and when it's time to come pay, we make the price. the price with 17 people and by the time it comes for the trip only three people were ready to pay yeah, and now absolutely. it's a whole different situation you know and that's why people so, get irritated and get yeah. mad at you yeah i definitely yeah. think if you approach it of like i'll pay my piece instead of just like taking your flight credit that will help as well if they're you know if if uh money has already been paid or like you know you're mm -hmm. calculated in the final number you should definitely offer that at the very least um yes or find someone to replace you i don't know if other friends but yeah, I, know. yeah and then even what jordan said that's a good point i couldn't make my friend's birthday because of covid and like i sent her something right i think that's a good point to say people i think will tell you on instagram and on social media like i mean like they just friends like forget it don't go don't do anything but friends are hard to come by let's be real especially in pandemic time so um be like just just treat your friend like just be nice and you may be like oh, this is extra but i promise you it may happen to you later and you would rather someone like, you know, still trying to make your day special. So I definitely say, Jordan said, like, send her something, uh, pay something, maybe not the whole thing, so they're mm -hmm. not out of money because that may, you want to go on other trips. You want to go on other trips when the world open up. So yeah, that's my advice. Yeah. Well, okay, Shady Boots, I hope that answered your question. Um, girl, don't be, don't be, forcing yourself if you're anxious just try to resolve the situation and stay your butt home uh, save the zayful some swimsuits for a different time okay. or the Shein swimsuits okay and we are not being sponsored yet so Shein and what is it zayful i thought it was zaful i thought it was zaful too but it's okay you guys <laughs> we are we do shop there so let us know if y'all trying to make a deal or something so oh, i don't um, i leveled up <laughs> Check, see the logo. See the oh, logo. I didn't get to show my shirt. I see have the logo. Weedy shirt. Oh, so, it's so icy summer, but it's a long sleeve shirt. I'm gonna come to I'm your house and take it out your joy. Okay, so I hang anyway, up my clothes. Thank you. Uh, I guess Elise wants a Dick Sporting Goods uh membership or something. I don't know. So y'all let us know on that one too, <laughs> sweetie. We love you. Everyone Sweet. have a great night. We'll talk. Bye. 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 Have a great night or oh, day. It's a day. This comes out. Great day. Mm -hmm. Life, Valentine's Day. I'm not. <laughs>